Let's get in there. Let's get this place sorted. Shut the bloody door. Let's turn that radio down. How are we doing, guys? Warm welcome to Country Van Life. Just turn that radio down a little bit. We don't want to get a bloody copyright hit, do we? How are we all doing? Well, welcome to Country Van Life TV. Uh, this is part two of uh, Fitting the Diesel Eater. Lovely jubbly. Uh, Saying the last one, we worked out, uh, we got the box out, we had a look at it, I've had a good look at it, uh, basically know where everything goes now. Uh, we sorted out the location as well uh, on the last video in part one. Um, and we're going next to the gas locker, uh, away from the gas locker. Uh, the fuel tank's going in my uh, wardrobe there on the outside, uh, in the outside locker. So I can fill it from outside, which is all lovely jubbly. Uh, I've just wired all the uh, harnesses up, I'll just show you guys. Um, uh, I won't do it take so long on this one, basically I'll fit everything and uh, show you after I've fitted it. You know where I'm going to put everything. I'll show you which stage as I'm doing it. Uh, I've just uh, put the wiring harness. The wiring harness is all connected, so I can see where all these wires are going. Uh, basically there's just one wire going to the fuel pump. Uh, which is there, so there's one wire going to the fuel pump uh, You've got your negative and you've got your positive, your 12 volt drive uh, Which are going to a, a fuse box which is inside the cupboard there Lovely jubbly and uh, the uh, it's all got inline fuses as well It's in there which we put in And the other cable is going to the uh, controller there So that's all connected as well And that's your controller with the remote control And that will be going up on my wall there, on the uh, sticker wall so lovely jubbly, so I've sorted all the wires now, so I've plugged it all in as such, the way it's going to go. Now all I need to do now is uh, just unplug that again. I've got all my bits on the table here, all ready to go guys. Just plug the plug off. I'm going to pop this down in the unit there and see uh, where I'm going to go with this. Lovely jubbly, uh, obviously that's the uh, internal vent where the hot air comes out. Those are the exhaust gases there going out, guys, and the fresh air coming in there. Lovely jubbly. Obviously, this back end needs to be clear because that's uh, the intake, the cool air going in as well. Even though you've got a cool air intake here, and uh, you've got the hot gases, the uh, poisonous gases, which are going out through the bottom of the van, uh, through that uh, heat dispersant plate, as I said, guys, uh, and out to the exhaust on the bottom of the van. So uh, I need to get down in that corner uh, and see how I'm going to lay this out in the best position. And uh, then what we'll do, we'll draw around the template. I know it's safe under there. I'll go with the camera again just to show you the underside. You must make sure that the underside where you're drilling through, don't just go willy-nilly with a drill through the floor, guys. You never know what you're going to hit. So double check, triple check where the drill is going to come out. Your ball hole is going to come out below the van because you don't want to hit anything guys, uh, God forbid you do that. So always double check, measure, measure twice, cut once. My dad always used to say that, Stephen, always measure twice and cut once. Lovely jubbly, which is a sound bit of advice. So I'm gonna work out the location. What I'll do, I'll put a, a pilot drill through for us, just a tiny little drill. I'll make sure everything's clear underneath. We'll go with the camera in a minute, we'll have a look guys outside. Uh, I'll go in with a pilot drill, uh, put a little stick down and see exactly where it's coming out at the bottom of the van. Right, here we go, I've drawn around that template now, uh, where I want to go, just pull that out of the way. Because uh, this template now will be screwed to the heater, uh, I'll show you that in a second, we'll get all the, uh, the bits in there as well. Uh, and that's where we're going, uh, that's where the holes will need to go. Lovely, uh, for the exhaust gas and for the intake of the uh, cool uh, air as well. Uh, and what I'll do now, I'm just going to pop a small, only um, uh, a 5 10 mil drill bit through there through there and through there and go and check underneath just to double check I know it's clear under there we've had a look with the camera it's all clear under there but I'm going to pop a uh, drill down there just to make sure all right here we go that's the beauty about these power packs guys mobile power wherever you go as long as the uh, wattage is not drawing more than 500 right let's drill these pilot holes just to make sure we're good and now I can see how thick as well the floor is uh, I think it's only a, uh, I think it's a, uh, a three layer floor on these, but anyway, here we go. Right, right let's have a look where those screws have come out. Bear with me, it's a bit awkward this is guys. I've got a torch as well because it's a bit dark under there. So, let's have a look where are we? 
get my head under there. It's pretty horrible working in the rain. The bloody floor's wet. Oh, wet and everything. Right, let's get under here, guys. Uh, right, there's a gas locker there, yeah? That's a, where the gas is, there. So this is under my seat here. I'm trying to find where these bloody screws come out. Now, oh, there they are. Whoops, did I say? There's one. There's two. That's where they've come out. Plenty of clearance, guys. Nothing around it whatsoever. Always double, double shoe, guys. Lovely job, they so nice and safe. We're away from from everything. And uh, so I can put my exhaust system down here somewhere against the frame here or wherever. And have the air take facing the other way. Tell you what, Sunday afternoon, it's like bleeding Blackpool. Bloody drills, chainsaws, people banging stuff everywhere. What right, happened to the day of rest? <laughs> well, I'm not resting, am I? Uh, right, so we've got that marked out. It's fine. We've had a look under the van. We're interfering with nothing, so I can get those holes drilled there uh, uh, with that template etching that I've done down there, guys. Now, 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 the issue with these uh, diesel heaters, uh, that's a template there, as I said before, guys. Um, it goes on. Hiya. Hiya. It goes on your heater. Let's get this up. Bear with neighbours walking by uh, so I bought this to the heater uh, which way does that go around goes right get the right way around okay it goes on there guys so that slot flies in there uh, bought that to the heater put all the relevant fitches on get them all clamped in with the uh, c-clips and whatever uh, get the fuel line clamped on as well uh, and then that goes down uh, to the two holes you made these two holes you've made down there with the templates but there's an issue uh, these heaters Basically, they were made for single shell vans. So you've just got the single shell, uh, you know, the steel frame of the uh, floor of the van. And this just drops straight through the steel frame. And you, you fit your housings on, and all was fine and dandy. But the trouble is, with the, uh, uh, a lot of other vehicles other than vans, some vans have double floors, but most RVs, or uh, especially vault vans, you know, you put your floor in, your insulation and everything. You haven't got a single seal, have you? A single sheet of uh, metal uh, for the uh, frame of the van. It turns out to be a double sheet if I've got plywood or padding or insulation or everything. It's the same on this one. Uh, the floor on this van, it's about, uh, it's about that thick, about five inches. You've got plywood on the top, plywood on the bottom or some sort of uh, uh, marine wood. And then inside you've got foam insulation inside, packed inside. So that system won't work because if I put that down there and put the tubes, connect the tubes, put the tubes through the two holes, those um, exhaust gases, it's just on the exhaust gas, the exhaust gases that are coming out of that, this is going to get really, really hot, guys, with the exhaust gases. The uh, um, So that's going to be touching that foam. It's going to be touching that wood below this uh, plate. And you're going to have major, major issues. That's a big problem with these, but uh, there is a solution. Um, I won't be using that solution. I'll be using my own solution, as I always do. Uh, there is a turret you can buy. And now, basically, what the turret is, it's one of those plates, but round. It's got a round steel turret sticking up about that high. So you drill a massive big hole in your van and fill your floor, your double floor, or whatever. Drop that through, and then. It's all insulated, isn't it? So you can put the hot exhaust uh, pipe down and it's not touching your van in any way. It's inside that turret. So that's the issue we've got with this one. But uh, what I'm going to do, instead of just drilling those two holes like that down there, just these two holes, I'm going to drill a big square opening like that uh, within this place, within the side of the flight. So we're going to have a big square hole in the van. So there's going to be a big, big hole in my van. Uh, uh, that'll be on there as site. So it's, it's a thick floor like that, guys. You with me? So you can't use that plate in that format. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drill uh, instead of two round holes, I'm going to draw a square hole, which will be that'll be the plate around it there. Okay, that'll be the plate around it, and the exhaust gas and the obviously the fresh air gas. We'll have plenty of room going down the middle, so all this will be cut, cut out here in the bottom of my van. All that will be cut out there in the bottom of the van. So those two exhaust, the one exhaust cast, will have plenty of room. It won't be touching the sides of the van or any of that foam. So that's, so that's what I'm going to do.
it may work out. Uh, I may have to go and buy a turret because the turrets are 25 bloody quid. <laughs> I ain't gonna spend no more bloody money, blimey. Uh, the turrets are 25 quid, nearly a quarter of the price of the bleeding a heater. And it's only a bit of sheet metal with a bit of tubing. Well, why do people charge so much for these little modifications? I don't know. I suppose I could wait, make one myself for a bit of weld, welding equipment, but I haven't. But uh, anyway, crack on with that. I'm going to get this bloody big hole drilled in the floor and uh, we'll go from there, guys. Right. Should we dive in? Here we go. There's a big hole in the bottom of my van. There you go, guys. You can see. It's a bit dark down there. You can see the uh, the pipe of my um, waste water there. That can be moved out of the way. That's no issue. Uh, but uh, there you go. Uh, so the actual um, this pipe, guys, which is the exhaust pipe, which is the one get, get, that gets hot, that'll be going down the centre of there. So it's going to have plenty of clearance. You with me? Can you see that's going to have an inch clearance all round. So the exhaust pipe is not going to be touching any part. I'm bloody right. Okay, with me. Uh, when the plate goes back on there, get it in the position, it will roughly be in. It'd be roughly about there. Oops, it'd be roughly about there. As you can see, it's hard to see without it's got it like that. So, the, that'll be the fresh air uh, intake uh, for the uh, motor. This will be the exhaust, the hot exhaust, and obviously, my fuel line will come up there, guys. Uh, so that hot exhaust here, if you look underneath, that's got a big hole to run through the middle. So it's not touching. The hot exhaust is nowhere near there and here. And I'm also, round here, I'm going to put uh, a heat proof uh, layer as well. Uh, heat proof insulation. And uh, underneath the van, it will have a similar plate to this underneath the van to stop any rain coming up or splash back underneath. Okay, that'll save me buying 25 quid on a uh, turret. Alright, this is really awkward. Oh, just got a load of sawdust in my eyes. Bugger. Right. Uh, there you can see. That's a bit of a mess under there, but uh, hey-ho. Uh, uh, you can see the exhaust manifold there, that one there. That's the exhaust manifold, guys. So it's nowhere near the frame of the van, of the floor. And I'll put a steel plate on here as well, similar to that one that's up there. And it will be insulated with heat-proof uh, stuff. Heat proof, heat proof tape and silicon. Lovely job, right? That other manifold there, that's, a, that's the cool air intake, so that one doesn't matter. It's that hot air one you've got to keep away from your frame. Okay, I think that works all right. That'll be okay there. I'll get all that locked in. We'll get all the connections on it before we put it down, guys. Uh, so the exhaust manifold and the, the uh, airflow uh, manifold will be hanging down. And the fuel line, and you can see the fuel line there, guys. That'll be going back up into the van because I've got my fuel line outside the van. Lovely job, Lee. Bit of a mess, but once I put my little plate on there, there'll be a square plate on here, guys. Uh, that'll be on there with uh, heat proof insulation. That'll be no problem at all. And also, it'll stop the rain getting in to the bottom of my floor. Lovely. I mean, it's only a hardwood floor, this uh, double double skin. Right, lovely job, Lee. Oh, lie, mate, right, Lee. Oh, blimey, I've got sawdust all over me. <laughs> Let's get back inside. Right, all right, terminating air tools. And if I should have put some floor covering down, but I can always clean my carpets up again. Bloody really tools everywhere. Right, uh, there it is in situ. There it is, sat there, lovely. It's all nice, sat in. Plenty of room there to put my venting tube, turn it and put it into my uh, internal system there. We've got the power cables there which will be running through the cabinet here. Uh, we've got the inlet, call inlet valve there as well. Uh, we're just on that guys, yeah. I know it's a bit close to that wall, but as I say, I'm going to drill, I'm going to put a little hole there, a little door, just open that up. Uh, so there's plenty of air coming in from this side as well. So that keeps that nice and cool. You want to keep these as cool as you can because obviously they'll be running into temperature. It's away from the side wall as well. It's about three inches away from the side wall, nice and central. It's raised up above the floor as well, slightly. Don't know if you can see that, guys. Is that too dark down there to see that? It's raised above the floor slightly. Lovely job, Lee. You can see all those holes. I've got to back all this out as well. Uh, all perforations there, they go into this locker here, a nice cool locker where my uh, water tank is. 
those air uh, oils come out here guys so there's plenty of ventilation for the intake of the fan there you can see all those oils like honeycomb you can't see very well there you go uh, loads of oils here <coughs> uh, so that's that uh, the uh, we've sorted out where it's going to be located we've drilled out the oils already uh, I'm prepping everything up now uh, I'll just show you the actual unit now ready to go in I've done plenty of ventilation down there uh, I might do a few a few more just show you the actual heater now with everything uh, connected to it as such except for the electrics oh here we go guys uh, I've got the uh, fuel line connected there so you're ready to go through the van I've got the exhaust ready and the uh, uh, fresh air inlet ready uh, all the valves are all connected just come a bit closer here you can see uh, that's the exhaust there so it's well away from the I've actually uh, this is a fuel line here this one here is a fuel line I've uh, put a, a clip on there to keep it away from here but uh, it'd be kept kept away anyway because the fuel lines go in that way away from this you want to keep everything away from this including the bottom of your van guys the floor and everything that's why I've done it the way I've done it uh, it's all geometry in that's as tight as ours is there's no leakage on there that's got to be really really as tight as you can get it guys because you don't want no exhaust coming out from here lovely jubbly uh, we've got the air cool air intake going there as well fuel lines all connected uh, I've got the fuel line going uh, under the plate there as you can see I'll put some insulation on the plate there and on the fuel line to stop it rubbing against the plate and the fuel line will come up uh, is a fuel line here your fuel line will come up into the top of the van and I'll go through the cupboards to the uh, fuel tank uh, which would be in my uh, in my outside garage there's a filter on the uh, fresh air manifold there and I've also got the hot air uh, system already plugged on there and uh, as I said I was going to vent it into my come up to me guys uh, I'm going to vent it into my uh, my own central heating system just look down there can you see there guys I've actually had, can't see that very well but uh, I'll give you a better look when it's all connected but that's my that tube down there that tube down there is my central heating system venting system I've put a uh, corner piece connected a corner piece there uh, with a bit of Gorilla tape so it's driving straight into this because uh, you can extend these uh, things but I'm going to extend it so and it's ready for connection there down there you really can see that it's bloody hard to do this especially when the lights is bloody crap at the moment here we go lovely jubbly that's a fuel pump already you have to put all these uh, rubber uh, connectors on guys to connect the fuel line fuel line are going there and the fuel line are going there uh, that way it will be to the tank that way will be to the heater uh, it's got a, a rubber housing uh, vibrating thing there so it doesn't vibrate too much uh, where I'm going to locate this yet it'll probably be in the garage where the fuel tank's going to be and also the filter as well the filter system you have to do the same with the Jubilee clips guys cut off some rubber uh, Ready. that's a fuel line I'll insert inside there there'll be another Jubilee clip on there and there'll be more of this on the other side the same as that guys that'll go inside there there'll be a Jubilee clip going around the edge once that's inside to lock it in and the same coming out that end so basically those two will be in line on the fuel line before it gets to the actual the heater because yeah, you've so got to think about a lot of things when you fit these guys you really have you've got to think about a lot of things uh, how the heat's going to be dissipated where the vents going where the fuel lines going where the electrics and everything where it's situated in the van how you orientate the uh, heater as well so you get the best optimum performance how you get ventilation to the box as well you've got to think about quite a few things with this which is uh and it's all to do with that actual initial fitting the rest of it's easy connecting all those pipes and the electrics that should be a doddle we'll do that in the morning anyway i'm going to have a nice drink have a a, a nose bag something to eat uh what's your telly fit the villa run tonight come on the villa playing leicester tonight so uh hopefully i'll be a bunny happy bunny in the morning and we'll get this done and dusted tomorrow morning and we'll get it running shall we We'll get it running. Lovely job, Lou. Till later. Ta well, it's the next day. Uh, we'll crack on with this. I did about uh, three hours yesterday, three or four hours. Um, I have a little break now and again just to break it up because uh, you don't want to overdose. It's uh, I'll do your head in if you just keep going at it. You know, four hours a day. That's more than enough for me on the van. Uh, right, uh, let's crack on with this. Uh, I'm going to sort the tank out now. Uh, obviously, the valve was inside. Um, there's a little valve, I'll just show you guys, that's the tank there, you've got to drill some holes in the tank. Uh, it may sound a bit strange drilling holes in the tank, but 
you've got to do it. Uh, it comes in inside the actual tank, is that little valve system there. So that pops inside the tank that way up. So it sits in the uh, on the uh, inside of the frame of the tank like that. Uh, just protruding slightly. Uh, so if there's any muck in the bottom of the tank, uh, it doesn't go into the uh, into the system, which is nice. The muck just settles at the bottom of the tank. So you need to get that inside the tank. Uh, you need to find a relevant uh, drill to fit the actual fitting. Uh, that's spot on. I quite can't see any measurements on that drill. But get one that man man manages the thread on the actual uh, the valve system there. So that'll be fine for that one. Uh, and on the actual valve as well, it comes with two rubber grommets, two rubber washers like that. You've got to put one on the uh, inside there, that one's on the inside, and before you put the nut on, once you've got it inside the tank and you're going to screw it on the outside, you need to put a rubber grommet on the other side as well to keep it nice and sealed, because obviously there's liquid flowing through the diesel. Uh, lovely job, Lee. And also uh, get a relevant screw for the screws that are going through that part of the tank. There's a three screw there. See there, guys? You've got to drill through there, there and there. And you've got three relevant screws for that as well with washers on it and again get the relevant uh, drill bit to fit the uh, screw thread as well lovely job Lee uh, so what I'll do I'll crack on with that uh, I, now to get this actual uh, fitting inside the tank because that's got to go inside the tank then you've got to come from the outside of the tank and screw the thread on so how do you get that inside there and popping out the hole at the bottom I'll drill the holes and I'll show you exactly how I do it, guys. Uh, I've drilled the holes inside there. Uh, there you go. You can see the holes going through the... Uh, keep them central as well, guys. Keep the holes nice and central. Lovely job, Lou. You'll have no problem. And uh, I've also uh, put uh, the hole in the bottom as well, because the tank's going to be like that. So my holes is in the bottom there. And you can see that, guys. I've drilled a hole there. The lights. Uh, you probably won't be able to see that. Uh, just test it with a valve. That's a valve. So the valve is going inside the tank and it's going to pop out that hole. So just test it that side just to make sure that thread goes through. There you go. That sits in there nicely. But that's going to be the other way around up inside the tank unit. And that's where you. Uh, it's a bit of fun. So how do you think you're going to get that down there inside to that bottom port? Uh, basically just use a bit of wire guys. That's all I'll do. Uh, come up through the hole. A lot of people go down there with their wire and try and find the hole, but no, no. come up with the hole there and go up to the top. Just keep pushing and it should pop through the, uh, the end. There we go, the wire comes out that end. It's, it's out that end there, it's out that end. Get your valve, put your valve the right way up. Obviously it's going that way into the tank. So just thread the valve onto the wire. I ain't got my bloody glasses on. And uh, just drop that down. It should go all the way down to the bottom. Lovely job, enough to come out the bottom. There we are. I've grabbed it at the bottom there, lovely, on the end of the wire. You can see that, guys? On the end of the wire, I've got it with my finger, and I'll just pull that through. Lovely job, Now I can pull the wire out. Put the rubber grommet on the end of there. It's in there nice and solid, guys, because it just fits the hole, which is lovely. Get that grommet on there nicely. Lovely job, Press that down, and then go over the top with your uh, screw. Right. The best way to tighten this up is to hold the, the valve, hold the valve end with a pair of pliers, something not too tight. You don't want to damage it, and tighten that uh, grommet up. Lovely job, Lee. I'll do that. I'll get back to you in a second. Right, that's on there, secure. There we go. That's what it looks like when it's on there. Uh, when you come to put in your uh, your your uh, fuel line on there, you've got to put a, a junction box on it, guys. Uh, one of the junction rubbers. Just get the end of my line here, guys, so I can show you. <laughs> right, uh, when you come to put your fuel line in there, uh, you've got to get one of these junctions here. Yeah, obviously put that, uh, push push that inside there. Uh, you might have to warm these up just a little bit in warm water to get them nice and supple so you can get this inside. Push that inside there, lovely jubbly. Uh, get one of your uh, little clamps that all come with it, one of these little C clamps guys, goes over the top and clamps it to the actual fuel line. You put a clamp on that end as well, ready to go on there. And when that's on there guys, Obviously that will be on there, you've got a clamp on there as well, and you tighten that down. So uh, that will be on there. You'll be looking something like that once it's fitted guys, lovely jubbly. There you go, with the uh, rubber grommet in between, and that's the way you connect it to it. All nice and lovely, that's nice and sealed now. 
Uh, what I suggest as well guys, because we've done a drill hole there, there might be a little bit of plastic uh, filings that have gone inside there, so give it a good, give it a good old shake. I mean you can swill it out with a little bit of diesel if you like, uh, just swill it through with just a, you know, a half a cup full of diesel and just spill it out somewhere guys and uh, just to wash it through. Make sure there's no bits of plastic gone through because you don't want those floating through into the fuel line. And there you go, you've got all the holes ready done there. So that's all ready for mounting now. So that's all you need to do for the fuel tank other than fill it up with the diesel once everything's connected. Lovely jubbly. Uh, I'll screw that to the, my cupboard outside. We'll go and screw that outside guys. I'll get all that fitted and uh, then we'll uh, start setting out the electrics because uh, yeah. those plates that's on there with the original packing are made for single shell uh, chassis. Um, that's what they're made for. Uh, so if you've got a, a floor like mine, uh, even if you've got a panel vent and you've built your floor up with insulation, you know, plus uh, uh, hardwood, uh, filling, hardwood, uh, and that's what, it, that's what it is on mine. That's exactly what it is on mine. We've got a top layer, top layer there of uh, plywood. Then we've got this foam installation in between and a top plate there. So you can see how that plate wouldn't have worked. That's why you need one of those turret systems that go down like that and come out the bottom. Uh, so hopefully I explained that well on the last video. But I'm going right. to have a cup of tea. Kettles on mother. Lovely jubbly. Actually it's quite a nice day today. And would you believe it's so nice? Went to go to work again on my bike this morning. Flat tire on my bleeding bike again. What the feck? <laughs> I get so many flat tyres. I, mean, I do love my bike though. It's, uh, you know, I'm a bit wild. I go off road quite a bit. I go a bit Rambo on my bike. So uh, no wonder I get flat tyres. They are mountain tyres though. So they should put up with it. I think there's like um, uh, an industrial type of tyre you can get. I don't know. Uh, in a tube. But uh, I don't know if I get two from bloody punches on that bike. But I do do a load of models on it. But it keeps me fit on the bike. Lovely jubbly, love my bike. Right, let's crack on with this. I'll come back in a minute. Right, we'll just show you the uh, tank uh, fitted in I situ. On outside the van. It's a lovely day today. Uh, we've got it installed, I'll just show you. There it is. Uh, just step back a bit, you can see my locker unit. Big locker there, plenty of room in there. Uh, there it's screwed to the wall. That's solid on there, guys. That's not going nowhere. Uh, you may say, why have you put it in that position, Steve? It's a funny position. There's plenty of room in there, look, there's loads of room, so I can get all, still get all my stuff in there. And uh, why have I put it in that position? Well, uh, if I had it square, then the filler would have been over there. Uh, a bit awkward to get at, or over there, so uh, I'll put it there. And also... Okay, if you come down to the uh, where the uh, outlet is, It'll always that, have that much diesel left in there, so any shit that's in there can gather there, can't it? Save it going through the system. So, uh, hey ho, it should be all right. But that's fine. Lovely jubbly. Uh, there's, I've got my uh, adapter fitted on uh, with the two clamps on as well, so that's all nice and tight. I've cable tied it in and it's running through there. I'll plug the hole up as well. That's running through into my uh, cabin, under seat cabin, towards where the heater's going to be. Lovely job, though. So that's that fitted. Well. And I pull it to the garage to fill up my diesel. All I do, pop open there, open that, inch goes, fill it up. Nice and simple. Lovely. Job. Right. I think we're nearly bloody there. Uh, so I've done a two, you know, two or three hours each day for the last three days. Uh, lovely job, Uh We've got it all. There she is. She's all plugged in and ready, powered up. Uh, I'll show you my electrics cupboard, but. Um, um, I'm leaving all the tidying up because you know all the electrics I'm putting here guys I'm leaving all the tidying up till uh, when I finish wiring so it's a bit of a mess in there at the moment it's a bit dark in there you can't really see you can see there's calibers everywhere at the moment guys both sides as well to the panels but all that's going to be tidied away uh, that's where all my solar's coming in from the roof uh, but all that's going to be nice and tidy uh, I'll probably put all that wiring behind a panel have a panel and just put a panel up against each side because obviously that's going to be a wardrobe uh, for my clothes and whatever to hang up uh, So I may just put a little panel against the side uh, to tuck that wire in away to make sure it's all nice and safe Make sure you don't pull anything when you're pulling in and out your clothes a Lovely jubbly. So that's it all installed uh, I'll run through it all in a minute go through all what, exactly what I've done just a brief synopsis of everything that I've done through the van uh, I've still got to do the outside. I've still got to plug in the silencer and the exhaust system 
uh, to the outside of the van, van with the brackets. Uh, so I'll crack on with that. Then I'll have a good bloody tidy up, because look at this station here, guys. It's like a bleeding bombs it. It was lovely and tidy the other day. But uh, this is the last of the big jobs, I think, on the van. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to do that wet room. I'm going to refurb the wet room at some later date. Now, uh, that'll probably be in a month's time or something. Uh, so uh, looking forward to that. There's not a lot to do in there. It just needs brightening up. Uh, probably needs a new shower hose. And... Um, I'll show you the way that uh, I will be using the toilet uh, when I'm out in the wild as well. I won't be using the Thetzer cassette. But uh, lovely job though. But uh, we're in a right mess here, guys. You can see here. Let's have a spin round. Right bloody mess. Oops, a daisy. Right bloody mess in here. Rubbish everywhere. <laughs> but hey ho. Uh, as I say, this is the last of the big jobs, hopefully. So I'll get all this done. I'll go outside. Well, actually, I'll show you outside first uh, where these pipes are coming out to show you what it looks like before. Then I'll show you an after. Hey, up, hey, up. The sun's out. Lovely jumbly. Right, let's have a quick whiz around there. It's a bit windy, guys, so uh, bear with me. Okay, there's the exhaust there. And you'll see all my uh, bits from the. Um... There's the heater hanging down. Uh, there we go. Just see there. Uh, that's the uh, fresh air intake. Uh, that's the exhaust manifold, which gets hot, guys. Uh, I'll just show you underneath if I can, but uh, this is all going to be tidied up guys, bear with me. Get down on my back again, blimey. Things I do for you guys, on my back again. Uh, if you just look inside there, there you can see, drop it through the holes there in the floor. All that's going to have a place on it. Uh, it's going to be insulated as well. Uh, all I need to do, this uh, cool air vent has got to go one way, uh, front facing. Uh, Got to be front facing like that guys and the exhaust once it's got the uh once it's got the silencer on the end that'll be facing that way guys or out here may, may even tag it onto the original resort exhaust here because that's the original exhaust coming out i may tag it onto there that's what it looks like now just turn it around let's get back in the van lovely job lovely. okay so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to tidy everything up get everything nice and spotless all nice and neat and tidy. We'll come back and we'll have a rundown of the finished product. Right, uh, as you can see there, on the base of this uh, door oh. here that goes down, you know that uh, nice uh, softening uh, foam tape? <coughs> uh, foam rubber as such. Uh, uh, it's, it's a nice damper for your engine base. Uh, it's about an inch and a half thick, as you can see like that, guys. And that's just to dampen down the sand. As you can see, I did explain earlier, I've got my, uh, you can't see very well, but uh, there's the uh, motor suspended. I've got it hooked up there, guys, and uh, it's down there as well. You can see the pump. Uh, it's not very good, is it, the lights? See the pump down there? There she is down there. Uh, you have to have that more or less vertical, but that should do like that. That's fine. And uh, all around the back there, you see on the back I've got the nice tampering sponge. Down the side, I've got the noise tampering sponge all underneath as well, and all on the top, just to uh, put this noise down a bit. It's open where the actual motor is. There's the actual burner down there, guys. Lovely job, eh? all nicely done in. As you can see, I've got uh, the noise suppression foam on the both ends, there, there, on the back as well, and on the top of the cupboard as well. So that's going to dampen all the noise. Just bring it back to me. We'll give this little baby its first ever run. Hope it's a good one. <laughs> right, back at you. Oh, I'm gagging for a bloody cup of tea. Kettle's on, mother. I can put the kettle on in a minute. Uh, right, I'm all tidied up. Uh, I've just got to get my cushions out there. As you can see, all in here is nice and tidy now. Uh, I need to do a bit of a, a vacuum round. I'll get the vacuum out in a minute. But before I put all my cushions down, before we switch, it up, switch this on, put some diesel in it and switch it on for the first time, uh, I'll just show you uh, exactly what I've done. Um, uh, I think I'll pop outside to show you that uh, it's not quite finished yet, but it's nearly there. Uh, I hope it's not too windy. It's a lovely day today. Lovely jubbly. Uh, right, I'll just show you this. This uh, I'm getting a, mate, uh, a little plate made up. I've got a bit of metal in the back. I just need to cut it to size. I'm just going to underpin this that I've done under here. Uh, so I'll turn that camera around and show you exactly what I'm doing, guys. Right, here I am underneath the van. Uh, that's where the, where the heater is, as you know, guys. Uh, this is going to have a plate on here. I'm going to put a steel plate on there. 
have to cover that up to stop any rain ingress going in even though rain rarely gets up to this this is quite solid this is the underfloor of the cabin guys and that's where the heater is lovely job uh, I've got the cool air vent there you can't see that because it's black and that's uh, all I've done is tape that uh, put a clip on that and it's taped to my water hose there uh, the air filters facing that way guys away from the uh, exhaust lovely job though uh, and the exhaust is going up here uh, I've got it clamped in there to the top and it's going out there to outside and that's the outside there so the exhaust is going straight out oh dear me bloody back oh I'm looking from the outside uh, you can see that's all nice and tidy all you've got is my um, water outlet there lovely all nice and tidy uh, the actual exhaust is just under there facing outwards Lovely. Right, let's get back inside. Right guys, uh, now the fuel's in, uh, we've got about uh, 5 litres of fuel in there, as you can see, lovely job though. Got all my stuff in my uh, locker, uh, I've got all these hanging hooks which I'm putting all around the locker guys because it goes right up there, there'll be all hanging hooks down here to store stuff. So loads of room in my locker, lovely job though. Uh, right, uh, just on all the, um, where I've made a fitting for the uh, fuel line, where there's that rubber housing and the sea clips on the, there's a, I think there's about four of those in total and about eight C clips on all of them I'm putting a bit of tissue like that now there's diesel in there uh, especially when it's running up uh, just to uh, double check you know my belt and braces just to double check there's no fuel leakage at all and if there is just tighten everything up and uh, be good to go but uh, best be safe than sorry eh? uh, that's been in there sometimes it's not a sign of uh, any leakage on there at all bone dry guys so uh, I'll leave that there but uh, I'll run it up as well and leave leave all these bits of uh, paper on all the junctions and uh, have a look when I've done the uh, run test just to make sure there's no leak. Yeah. You know, it's looking really cosy now, you know, guys. It really is looking really cosy. Uh, a real home from home. I'm so comfortable in here. I just can't wait to get out on the road. All right, so all our systems are in there. Everything's tucked away. All the wiring's done. All the fuel lines done. We've got diesel in as well. As you can see, we've got uh, the diesel heater monitor there. Uh, at the moment, it's in reading battery mode, so we've got 13 volts in the battery. It's also a battery monitor as well, which is lovely jubbly. And uh, we'll run this up in a minute, guys. Just turn that camera around. Oh, lovely jubbly. Right, uh, well, that's another job over with. Uh, providing everything works fine, it should be okay. It should be all right with that. I've tested everything. So double check, triple check, make sure all your, your circuit breakers are right, make sure your fusing's right on the 12 volt side. Make sure the um, the exhaust gases from the um, diesel heater are going out and there's none coming back in the cab. We'll make sure that's all nice and sealed, we've done that. We've checked the air intakes as well, those are all working fine. So the electrics are fine, we've got backup fuse cutouts and relays as well. Uh, we've got uh, the actual monitor running up there, lovely jubbly, so the 12 volt line's working, uh, the exit exhaust gases, the inlet core gases are all fine, nice and clear, the fuel line is fine, I've checked all the connections on the fuel line, so I think there's one, two, three, four, five, I think there's six rubber hose connections in total with clips on, so I'll uh, just double check all of those, I need to check the one uh, under the bottom of the heater as well, I'll put some, I'll just wrap some tissue around there, make sure that's fine. And uh, we'll give it a good run and see if there's any diesel leakage on any of those points. And uh, if there is, we'll just reclip them or tighten them up or whatever needs to be done. But uh, I think it'll be fine. Those clips are really tight on, so it should be fine. Sometimes pushing those fuel line into the rubber housing is a bit difficult. So if you warm the housing up a bit, give it a bit more, you know, to get it in there a bit better, guys. So it's uh, so sometimes you might put the jubilee clip on and you've not actually got your tube line in far enough. So. Uh, just make sure that tube line is fed well into the rubber housing before you put your little jubilee clips on and tighten it all down. But uh, right, 
Yeah, so I'm just going to drink my cup of tea, sit here for five minutes, and we're going to power her up, see what she does for the first time. And you know what this means, once we've got uh, heating, because we're coming up to the middle of the winter, we'll be able to do some test trials, whoopee bloody doody, we'll be able to get out in the van, do a bit of cooking, have a bit of wild camping, get out in the van, and do the business for a couple of nights. I need local, I need to go down the road to Yarmouth or somewhere so far. Uh, don't know how long this video's gone on for, but uh, hey ho, let's get over there. Should we switch it on? <laughs> I'm a bit hesitant to switch it on. <laughs> Is it gonna work? Is it I've gonna got work? the uh, motor suspended, because um, I don't want it against the wall, because it does tend to vibrate. I did try it against the wall with that that's a rubber housing, but uh, it, was, it was just vibrating too much against the wall, and that's gonna vibrate through the van, I'm sure it is. So I've suspended it, it's fine where it is, it's at the right angle, you've got to get it to a certain angle, the right way up as well, and also the fuel pump has to be more or less vertical, even though it's on the tilt slightly. Uh, and I've been priming, turning this on and off, because with a lot of these Chinese diesel heaters, uh, you have to uh, hit uh, the two bottom buttons to uh, prime it. What I mean is prime, it's get all that fuel through your pipeline to your motor. Uh, so they're all out of priming, press two buttons on the bottom and they prime, but on this one it doesn't. Uh, you have to turn it on and off about four times for it to fully prime and I've done that. I can see all the fuels through the line. I've tested all my joints with a bit of a uh, tissue as I said before just to make sure there's nothing leaking and there's nothing leaking. It's all fine and dandy so there's no reason at all that this should not work. Um, I'll just get my seats back in so I'm a bit more comfortable because hurting my backside on this uh, board. <laughs> Here we go, all cosy dozy. Got my uh, furniture back in. Lovely, all my cushions back. Lovely. Right, should we fire this babe up? Uh, as I say, it hasn't got that uh, two button primer on this one. You have to turn it on and off. Uh, I think I did it five times. You can actually see the fuel coming through. Uh, what you need, to, you need to get into position where the actual fuel filter is full of fuel, is full of diesel. Once it gets to that point, then it pumps it through a lot better. And uh, say so after about four or five switching it on and off, it goes to an error code, error eight. Error eight means uh, not enough fuel on these, on this one anyway. Uh, you just turn it off, uh, let it do its cool down business and turn it back on again. Did that I think five times and, uh, and the fuel line is now full. There's no air bubbles or nothing in it. So technically this should start straight away. Uh, at the moment it's just in uh, power uh, monitor mode for your batteries coming up 13 volts. Obviously you need a good solar system and a good power supply for these guys to keep them running. Uh, but we've got all that sorted. I'm running it off my middle power bank system. As you know I've got three power bank, well four actually. Uh, three power bank systems. I've got, I've got the back one, uh, two uh, 120 um, amp batteries are running to a 120 watt solar panel. I've got the two middle ones, no the one middle one which is a 200 watt uh, battery that's running off a 120 watt panel. Those two systems are run off the solar, are charged by the solar system. Uh, in the front of the cab I've got two 120 amp hour batteries running off the uh, alternator that's charged by the alternator uh, via battery battery sensor. Uh, so lovely jubbly, so that's three main power systems and I've also got my power banks as well. So four. Anyway, this one's run off the middle one. I may run this actually off my alternator, my uh, leisure uh, system on the front. So the alternator keeps it topped up all the time, especially in the winter. But I'll see how it goes anyway. This is all about testing and trialling in the field really. Right, stop rabbiting Steve. Shall we power up guys? Shall we power up? Here we go, come close, come close so you can see what I'm doing. See that it's in uh, battery mode at the moment. And to power up, all you do is uh, obviously press the uh, power key, which is that one there. Just press it and hold it. There she goes, she's fired up. It's on heat setting three. Put on one heat setting you like. Uh, I'll put it on the highest, which is five. Hope you can see that, guys. It's on setting five. And what it will do now, it will go through its uh, initialization startup. It takes about five um, to eight minutes for everything to get to temperature. Uh, you can see there that the uh, spark plug is glowing, the fans are starting to roll, it'll start to pump the petrol through in a minute, the petrol pump will come on in a second, that means the uh, the diesel, sorry, the diesel pump will come on in a second saying the diesel's been pumped, but at the moment uh, we seem to be fine, uh, those are all your bars there, they'll light up one by one as you get to full power, 
telling us the uh, temperature there. What temperature we actually got inside the van at the moment? Bear with me. Uh, it's, it's quite mild out today. As you can see there, we've got 71, 71 in the van at the moment. So it's not going to be a, a proper winter test. You need winter conditions, really. Uh, so it's 71 in the van. It's quite warm, actually. It's been a lovely day today. The sun's been on the van all the day, so plenty of solar charge. Lovely jubbly. So it's quite warm, but uh, we'll test it anyway. We'll get that thermometer down there. We'll see what temperature's coming out. So I've got it in setting 5. So that'll take about 5 to 10 minutes to ramp up and then settle down. Once it's ramped up, the, the motor will get noisier and noisier on ramp up. This only happens on ramp up till it gets to optimum temperature with the uh, glow plugs. Once it's got to its temperature, it settles down and this just purrs along. But hopefully the only thing that you'll hear, the way I've got this set up with all my muffling systems, the way the only thing you'll hear is the, the fan of the actual heater. You won't hear nothing else. But we'll see anyway when it's fully rumping up. Right, uh, that seems to be settling down. I've turned it down now a little bit because it's too bloody warm. It's not the best day to try a heater. It's probably the warmest day we've had for about two bloody months. Uh, where are we? Uh, we're looking at... Uh, 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 where are we? 17.5 degrees outside centigrade. So, uh, and it's coming up to 24C inside. Our target is 26, as you can see on the screen there. So another two degrees, and we'll be hitting the target. You can put whatever target you like in these, uh, whatever temperature you want. Uh, you can put it on timer, so you know you can have it come on an hour before you get up and turn off an hour after you've gone to bed. Lovely job, Lee. So we've got central heating now. Uh, I don't know if you can hear. Can you hear the fan? Can you hear that gentle rumour of the fan? Just I like having a fan heater. It's just a fan. Can you hear the motor at all? Can you hear the click, click, click of a motor? I barely, barely can hear it. With all that suppression I've got going on under these seats to, uh, you know, with all that sound down, and with the motor suspended as well, if I go to the uh, bedroom here, let's have a walk. Come into my bedroom. Oh, uh, <laughs> I wonder how many times I'll be saying that when I'm out in the world. <laughs> Don't think so. Again, I just can hear the gentle hum of the fan. Can't hear no pump of the motor at all. And this is the most important area here in my lovely uh, boudoir. There you go, guys. My lovely bedroom. You can see uh, with the bedroom, I built the bed that high for a simple reason, guys. One simple reason. So I've got my head out the bloody windows when I wake up in the morning. I can have the window open when I'm sleeping as well. I love fresh air in my face. I really do. No matter what time of year, whether it's winter, spring, summer, I love to have a little. I'll, I'll have the um, and it's slightly in the winter, but uh, I do. I love. I love just fresh air in my face when I'm sleeping. I sleep why I've done that. I've built the bed that high in level the windows because it was right down there the initial fold up bed from the uh, chairs, but I built a permanent bed. I've got a massive garage under there as well now, which is lovely, jubbly. Uh, one of my power pack stations is under there as well, and that heat. I tell you, the heat coming from. So you can't hear it. Because it's got, because I've got it on all my venting system coming throughout. It's a, uh, there's a, there's an outlet that goes into the uh, wet room. There's an outlet that goes under the bed, and of course you've got the outlet of the fire here, the original heating system, and the heat coming out of there, guys. If I said to someone, my fire's on, can you turn it off? They'd come up to you and think, oh, blind me. That's on. How'd you turn it off? They wouldn't be able to turn it off because you didn't that. It's on. That's isolated, that's not on no more. It's just my heating system going through the system. And the heat coming out of there, guys, the heat coming out of there now, from that motor over there, awesome. Well, I'm really chuffed with that. That's worked out a bloody dream. Uh, so it's uh, probably need a couple of runs, you know, a couple of switches on and off uh, to get it all bedded in, get the smells, because all the new smells of new engines and everything. All the ducting as well needs to be blown through because uh, it's been in there some time. And so you, you will get a little bit of a, a smell from the uh, new product, but that'll go eventually. That'll all burn off. You can see there, that's settled down now. That's settled down to a murmur. And the heat coming out of there. Let's just get my probe on there to show you. To show you so I'm not lying as such. <laughs> if I would, I wouldn't. You know, I wouldn't, guys. No oh, bullshit on this bloody channel. I think so much crap. I bloody well tell you. I'll just get my get my monitor off the screen there. You can see that's uh, that's set at uh, where are we? 22, the top one. 
uh, the bottom one I turn this is the outside uh, probe see the bottom one I turn your grease I'll just put that down there by the fan and we'll give that a, a, a minute or so uh, so yeah lovely jubbly uh, and also you must have even though you've done all your checks all your inspections you make sure there's no leaks there's no carbon coming out or there's no exhaust gases you've done all that and double checked it you know my belt and braces check it check I can't emphasize if you're unsure, you fitted it, get someone else to check it with a probe or a meter or some sort of sensor. Get someone else to check it all for you guys. But, uh, you know, I've done all that. But even for my peace of mind, I've still got carbon monoxide detectors. I've got two in the van. I've got one in the front, one in the back. Uh, they're for carbon monoxide. They're also for gases and color gas and any um, gases that are not pleasant to us humans as such. Uh, that's all monitored. So that's a backup as well. Lovely job, like. Right, where are we? What was we on? 17? What's that on? 63? Blimey, that'll melt me bloody probe. <laughs> oh, that, that probe's red hot. 63? So it went from 17 to 63. So it just shows it works, guys. It works a bloody treat. You can have it on trick or tick over like that, or you can have it on timer, so it comes on every hour or something, or every two hours. Like the central heating in your home. You can have it coming on every two hours or every three hours just to keep the van nice there you go uh, that's the uh, diesel heater completed oh do you like my shirt this is another shirt off my uh, site another one of my shirts guys this one's for, for Talbotiers here we go it says I'm a Talbotier and I'm living the dream and the uh, Talbot logo and the uh, Talbot van on there lovely all on my merchandise shop if you want to have a look at that guys right I don't think there's anything else I want to go through uh, that was a bit of a long one. I'm not sure how long this video is. I might have to cut it down a little bit, guys. But uh, lovely job, boy. Well, well impressed with this Chinese diesel heater. And I know they do the business. I know they last a long time. I mean, even if it fails after 12 months, you know, you can maintain them yourself. It's easy to maintain. You can change the pump. You can do clean out the jets, clean out the system, give it a surge, you know, give it a purge and whatever every now and again just to clean out the jets. They're quite easy to maintain because it's a basic, simple little box. It's like having like a little steam engine in your van. It's lovely. Love it. I love stuff like this. I love anything with lights on as well. <laughs> Here we go. We've got another panel up there. I got my uh, solar up there as well, guys. Lovely jubbly. That's all pumping away. Beautiful. We've had some sun today. There we go. That's settled down now. Gotta do that on and on. We'll have a we'll have a re look at this in a couple of weeks once it's done the business and running and you know once it's uh, I've uh, had it. To use as such out in the field uh, I'll give you a show over the actual controls and what you can do what you can't do on there lovely job though and if there's any issues with it that need uh, sorting I'll let you know right Stephen you're bloody rambling again it's getting bloody dark I bet you can't bloody well see me what's put me light I'm not plugged into electrics now because I don't need to plug into my electrics now to keep the van nice and warm all I do I'll put the timer on that heater now to come on in the middle of the night when it's the coldest only for an hour or something Lovely job, Lee. Just to keep everything nice and warm inside. You shouldn't really put it in on while you're not in the van. Uh, that's a bit silly. So it's uh, you know you need to do it while you're in the van. Uh, and also you don't want to put the heating on while you're driving. I know some people do. Uh, but uh, hey ho, that's up to you guys. Lovely job, Lee. Right, here we go. Till next time. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for this one. It's been a long one. But that's just an insight into diesel heater. It's not a show and how to as such. It's just an insight in what they're all about more than anything. And uh, don't take my advice as gospel. Go and check out other people's videos or professional advice. I'd rather you get professional than go to YouTube, guys, because uh, at the end of the day, everyone in YouTube, you know, we're not professionals. I'm not a professional. I'm no gas fitter. I'm not, uh, you know, even though I've been a fitter all my life, an electrician uh, to component board level, um, you know, I've been a technician all my life. You know, it's uh, I'm quite happy the way I do things. But uh, if you're unsure, get professional help. Professional advice. That's the biggest caveat. Anyway, guys, I'm Rabbit here. Till next time. Don't know what we're doing next. The next video, we might be out there now. We've got some heating. Go and do a field test, eh? Do you fancy that? Who fancies a field test? A couple of days down the coast. Sound good? My first bed? My first sleepover? My first cooking? Till then. Ta da!